just this past weekend on Reddit, I saw this thread I thought that we should discuss on the channel. There are several nuances in this particular thread here, so I'm looking forward to getting into it. Let's review the main post. Trying to move to Northern Virginia from North Carolina, family of four, we were there this weekend. We saw properties in Herndon, Fairfax, Ashburn, and Alexandria. I'm still confused. Looking for a well-diverse community, family-friendly, and a good school, any suggestions will be helpful. Now, I did respond to this thread with my suggestions, but that's not the main point of this video. Here are my suggestions. First, you wanna think about the schools first. You wanna think about the schools first. That means the high school. In my opinion, you don't know how long you're gonna be here in most cases. So start with the end in mind, pick a great high school, and then make your decision as far as the middle school and elementary school shortly afterwards. The second thing on your list you wanna think about is your commute time. How long of a commute are you really comfortable doing? In Northern Virginia, it's quite reasonable to have a 30 to 45 minute commute. An hour is gonna be on the longer side, and we know people who have one and a half hour long commutes. The next thing you wanna think about is creature comforts. Okay, this is how you're going to use the community or your location. If you are like myself and you like to go to DC every week, then you probably wanna be a little bit closer to the city. If the city life isn't your style and you maybe want to be closer to your house of worship, then you probably wanna to try to live around that particular area. The last thing you wanna consider when it comes to creature comforts is whether or not you want to be near a gym, parks, or shopping. If that's important to you, live close to those items. Okay, that thread was full of a lot of useful advice from people and users all throughout the region, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about this following comment. When I'm relocating to a new state, I generally always rent first for a year or two until I have a better idea of the area and where I'd want to set a more permanent place of residence. One of the benefits of using that strategy is you believe you have enough information or you believe you need more information to make a quote unquote, better decision. This is a rent first, buy second strategy and I think it's a horrible idea, especially for high cost of living markets like Northern Virginia. And I'm gonna explain. I'm gonna explain my position. And if you disagree, let me know in the comment section right now. If you like to rent first, then buy second, let me know in the comment section right now and let me know why. I'm pretty sure we'll get an interesting conversation down below. So let's jump into this. The strategy of rent first, then buy would work in three scenarios. First of all, if we were in a dream home market. So this is a place where people buy their forever home. This is a place where people make sure they have custom paint jobs, they have custom driveways, they have custom everything. Northern Virginia is not that place for most people. This idea would also work for individuals who are looking for their final resting place. You know, places like Florida, Arizona, places where people retire. Northern Virginia isn't that. This would also work if you're never going anywhere. Like you know you're going to live here. There's no questions, no ifs, no buts about it. For most people, that's not what Northern Virginia is for. And the reason why this isn't the case for Northern Virginia is, no one dreams of owning a three level townhouse that's $700,000 with a one car garage that's too small to fit most modern SUVs and tack onto that a 45 to 60 minute commute. That's not what you dream of. So that means there's four different types of people who live in Northern Virginia. One, they're transplants. These are people who used to live in some middle America place and then they were called to the big headquarters or they answered a job post in the DMV area and now they're here. These people are making moves. These are players. The second type of individual that's here in Northern Virginia is someone who is military personnel. That's current or past. We have several bases around this area 
and a lot of military personnel have served multiple terms here. They've been relocated or stationed here several times and they like it here. They also like the fact that they can leverage their knowledge and their database in the military community to go and secure a government contracting position. That's just the, the way things work here. The third type of person here is someone who is a career builder. This is a young person, a young professional who maybe just graduated from college and they saw that there are a lot of job opportunities in this region, maybe for cybersecurity, maybe working at one of the data centers, maybe they're software engineers. They saw that they could fulfill their entire career obligations in this one location. The fourth and final person that's here are locals. These are people who have several generations located in the Northern Virginia area. These are the same individuals that when you talk to them, they will say things like, that road over there, that used to be a dirt road. That community over there, that used to be a dirt mound. They always tell you about things that used to be this and how it's changed. They usually complain about traffic and they usually complain about the newcomers, but we love the locals. They bring a little bit of flair to this location. Now that we know why you would use this strategy and we also know some of the players that live here, let's talk about why you wouldn't use this strategy. Now this next segment, it's not gonna be for locals because to be honest with you, locals already know a lot about this region. So they don't need that much guidance when it comes to knowing where to live, except for local young professionals. I'm seeing this little trend right now with people who are from this region who are young, who decide to make a profession here, make a living here, and they decide to not buy a home in their earlier years. So you should stay tuned as well. The first reason why you don't want to use the rent now, buy later strategy is the market can get away from you in high cost of living areas. We had a client a couple years ago in 2019 who was looking for a single family home in Falls Church. Now, these were friends of the family and we were thrilled to help them in their home search. And we looked for about six to seven months. Falls Church has always been a very challenging market to get into, especially when you're looking at those starter priced single family homes anywhere under $800,000. There's always multiple offers on those properties. This particular client over six to seven month time period, they were able to put two houses under contract, but both houses failed their home inspections. And we decided that we wanted to walk away from those properties. If you've been on this channel for any length of time, you know that I believe once you've started looking for a property, we don't stop until you finish. This particular client though, decided that they were going to start renting again because they were frustrated. I know this is a very common thing to do. They get frustrated and then they go back, lick their wounds in a rental property and then they come back out again. This was a huge mistake and I'm gonna show you why. In 2019, the average sales price in Falls Church was $614,000. Now, my client signed a two-year lease with their landlord, so they missed out on 2020. The prices from 2019 to 2020 increased by $38,000. Now, they're still renting at this time point. I tried to get them to see the, the benefits of looking at renting and buying a home at the same time. So maybe they could stay in their rental or maybe they could look at what are the clauses in their lease to terminate their rental if they need to. One of the things you need to know is that every rental contract says what it takes to terminate your lease. Review your rental contract, also known as your lease, and see what the fine print says about what it takes to get out of that deal. Whatever that financial penalty is, that's what you pay. And once you realize that maybe it's $3,000, $5,000, $10,000, whatever it is, that needs to come into consideration when you're looking for a property. Prices increase $38,000 right here. I'm pretty sure that whatever the penalty was for breaking the rental or the lease agreement wasn't $38,000. Remember now, my clients are in a two-year lease, so they couldn't start looking until 2021. At least that's what they decided to do. Well, in 2021, the prices increased increased to $681,000. That's right. So now prices are up $67,000 from the time they started looking in 2019. Even with low interest rates,
rate, my clients were now priced out of the Falls Church market. That's what I mean by the market can get away from you. Because Northern Virginia is a high cost of living area and you don't really get any new construction until you go out into Loudoun County or some parts of Prince William County or even Stafford, most of the core of the region, we have almost like a housing shortage. Since we have a housing shortage, there's always going to be demand. This means you have to compete or you have to be searching constantly to satisfy your needs to buy a home here. Luckily for my clients, they did find themselves a property in their existing community that they were renting in. So I think it was the best case scenario for them really. And they didn't have to worry about competing in Falls Church anymore. But I did wanna let you know that when my clients started looking at properties in Falls Church, the average sales price was $614,000. Now in 2023, which is when this video is being recorded, the average sales price is $758,000. So prices have increased in Falls Church for uh, up to $144,000. Yep, $144,000 over five years. I know what you're saying right now. You're thinking, Abraham, you're cherry picking information. We just had a global event that caused the government to issue record low interest rates. We had record level bidding wars in some of these markets. So Abraham, these numbers, they just don't add up. I'm glad you brought that up. In 2010, the average sales price for a home in Falls Church was $402,000. In 2019, the average sales price was $614,000. So this is before the global event. That's a 212 thousand dollar increase over that 10 year time period so that is twenty thousand dollars increase on average year after year after year so you see northern virginia is unique in the sense that it's sort of insulated from some of the natural things that go on in most markets because of the federal government and the military we have a lot of companies here who service the federal government we have a lot of government employees we have a lot of individuals who are in the military who all receive a nice compensation to live in this high cost of living region i don't see that going anywhere anytime soon so we should expect for northern virginia to continue to be insulated from most market dynamics that affect most traditional markets in most of america one more note about military buyers and members of the military community in northern virginia they represent 12 to 15 percent of all of our transactions every year consistently sometimes it peaks at around 17 percent but usually it's between that 12 to 15 percent range the second reason why you shouldn't use this rent now buy later strategy is that you're wasting your money you're wasting your money. On this channel, we will never vilify renters. We will never vilify renters because every market needs renters. We need landlords, we need renters. Some people just can't buy. Some people choose not to buy. So you'll never hear us say that you're throwing money out the door or you have some type of return or whatever. They, they say all kind of hot garbage around renting. We're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that, okay? I just want you to know that if you can buy a home, then you should. So last week I went to my first physical therapy appointment ever in my life, right? So I'm 41 now. I was 40 last week. So this is my first time I got some issue with my hip and I am uh, working through those. My physical therapist was a 27 year old man who is renting in Arlington. Now, he's a physical therapist. He probably makes good money. I asked him, do you own a home right now? There is a trend for some reason in Northern Virginia where we see a lot of young professionals in their mid to late 20s, all the way up to their early 30s, who stay in rentals. They stay in rentals for some reason. Based on the way this guy looked, I assume that he was renting because it seems like a clean cut young person in Northern Virginia likes those uh, really nice rental properties or rental communities that have a lot of amenities and they have shuttle services and they have the latest gym and stuff like that while also charging you, you know, anywhere from twenty five to four thousand dollars a month. Anyway, this young man said he is renting right now and he uh, maybe will buy a home when he's in his 30s. And I told the young man, I said, hey, look, 
I'm pretty sure you have friends who think like you. You all should have an emergency meeting. Every one of your friends should buy a condo right now. He's 27. If he buys a condo right now, this is how I explain it to him. If he buys a condo right now, then when he's in his mid thirties, he will have enough equity in that particular property. Most times, most cases, okay? He will have enough equity to take a portion of that equity, maybe sell the condo, and then move into, move up to a townhome. Now, he could have some additional savings set aside, but he could take a large percentage of his equity from his condo and move into his townhome. And then when he's in his mid forties, if he wants to, he could move out of that townhome and into a smaller single family home. And then when he's in his mid fifties, if he wants to, he can take that smaller single family home, sell that, take the equity out of that property and move into a million dollar, 1.2, uh, 1.4 million dollar home with all of that equity. It's important for us to talk to young professionals about gradually progressing with the homes that they're in. The reason why you wanna think about this as a gradual progression is there's really only two ways to make money. There's the route of building a business, and then there is the other route that's the more popular one, which is working a career. Most people have careers. So let's talk about the career track. Now, this isn't meant to be offensive, but if you're working in a career, you're really on a fixed income and you may not know it. Your starting rate is kind of fixed and then you gradually get incremental raises over the years. And we can predict, even if you factor in your promotions, how much you're going to make over your lifetime. So your income will gradually increase just like the size of the property you're in will gradually increase. And since you're on a fixed income and this conversation is about using your capital wisely, most of you will make anywhere from 4.5 million to $9 million over your career. Go ahead, calculate it, calculate it right now. If we take the 30% of your income, your gross income and dedicate towards housing, that means that you're going to spend over your lifetime between 1.35 million and $2.7 million on housing. Now in America, we have this great deal with American banks where if you put 20% down, the bank will provide you with the other 80% and you get control of the asset, which is the property in this case. So that means that your $1.35 million, if we looked at it like a down payment, then you could control $6.75 million in real estate assets. On the high end of that, at 2.7 million, you can control $13.5 million. Just imagine your retirement years if you had at 6.75 to 13.5 million dollars in real estate under management. You would have wonderful sunset years. Just wrap your head around 6.7 to 13.5 million dollars in real estate assets. You're literally a millionaire. How do we start this domino effect though? How do we start? Buy what you can afford today, which is a small condo. I talk about it regularly on this channel. Buy a condo. As soon as you begin your journey, buy a condo. Most of you are living in condo-like developments anyway. There are three objections I get regularly when I mention to young professionals why they should buy a condo. Now, I'm seeing young professionals, but this goes for anyone at any stage of their real estate journey. Start with the condo, start with what you can afford. The first objection is, I don't like the condos in my price point. Look, you may not like where you live right now, but you don't own it. Why not build equity where you are? At least when you own the condo, you can personalize it, right? You don't have to worry about these horrible landlords in some scenarios, not all landlords, Landlords are horrible, but you don't have to worry about that. And you own it and you're building equity. The second objection that I receive about buying a condo is you don't like the condo fees. You feel like the condo fees are high. Rather than think about the condo fees as money being thrown out the window, look at it as exterior maintenance. You're just paying for exterior maintenance every month. What you don't know right now is most people when they sell their properties have so much deferred maintenance, especially towards the exterior of the property that they kind of play catch up when it's time to sell their property. With a condo, you don't have to worry about that. You're paying for your exterior maintenance 
as you own the property. To be honest with you, you are doing what most homeowners should do when it comes to exterior maintenance, which is you should have a reserve account, which you contribute to every month, and you should be doing periodic maintenance on your property, not when the items fail, but just when they are at the end of their useful life, which is what most condo associations do. The third objection I get about buying a condo is I would rather get a townhome, right? I would rather get a small townhome. I'll just wait to get a townhome. I'm saving up money now. I'll have enough money saved up in a few years from now. So I'm gonna just wait. The problem with that theory is that with today's interest rates, yesterday's single family home buyers are today's townhouse buyers. Affordability has really been hit hard when it comes to the properties in the middle of our transactions, which are anything between the fives and $800,000. That's kind of where we sell the most properties in Northern Virginia. With rising interest rates, a lot of those people who would have been in the nines to $1 million price points have now come down to maybe seven to $800,000. So that means that the people who are in the sevens to $800,000 are now in the fives and sixes. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? So your competition for townhomes right now is a little stiff. Okay, so now that we wrapped up what the objections are that I receive about buying a condo, let's finish up this video with the third reason why you shouldn't use the rent now, buy later strategy, which really boils down to two different segment of people. First off, it's individuals who have a large budget Secondly, individuals with special requests. A large budget for the purposes of this video is anyone that is shopping in that 1.3 or higher price point with 20% down. Even if you're a million dollar buyer, if you don't have 20% down, you're going to have a challenging time competing with other buyers in that price point. If you do have a large budget and you know what you want, you know where you want to be, you can't really take any time off when you're looking for a property. Yes, you'll probably go into a rental anyway while you're searching for a property, but you're going to be actively looking as soon as you get here, as soon as you get here. If you're the type of person who has special requests and what comes to mind with special requests is someone with uh, a need for five bedrooms. We have a lot of four bedroom homes, but you don't have that many five bedroom homes. Someone who's looking for a, a three car garage, someone who wants to be uh, walking distance to the metro station, or if you're looking for a new home in an established community. Those individuals, yes, you'll probably go into a rental, but you you're still going to be looking for a property actively while you're in the, in the rental agreement. So make sure when you look at your lease, if you sign your lease, see what the special provisions are for terminating your rental agreement. I have a question for you before you leave. If you bought a home in your 20s, what did you buy? Was it a condo, townhouse, single family home? Did you keep it? Did you get some assistance from a family member, friend to help with your down payment? Let me know in the comment section and I will see you in the next video. Peace.